All right, guys, so what we're going to do in today's video is go over some more new and very interesting information regarding The Last of Us Part 2. I wanted to not only take some time to relay the info to you, but also give my thoughts on it and really just express my excitement about one particular thing here, that being the heartbeat system that apparently Naughty Dog is implementing into this game, which sounds absolutely insane. If there's anything that I think we can all agree on here is that the developers over there at Naughty Dog are very good at what they do, and they are clearly very excited to finally be able to talk about this game, and one of the biggest areas that they've been focusing on is the actual tech behind everything we're going to be seeing with this game, which has me very interested because when you actually look into it, or if you listen to anything we've been talking about here and you read about it, you realize very quickly that they are doing things that literally I don't think I've ever seen game developers do before. And this heartbeat system sounds like something I, honestly, I've never heard of it in a game. And it sounds like it's really just some next level stuff. And I know we've been saying that a lot about this game, but I think when you go over this info, when you think about what they're saying here and the intricacies, and just the actual level of realism they're striving for, you start to realize, like, yeah, this truly is, like, next level. I've never heard of anything like this. But before going any further, I do want to just take a quick moment here to thank you guys for all of your recent support lately here on the channel when it comes to especially talking about The Last of Us Part Two. If there's one thing I absolutely love doing here on this channel is talking about games, games that have me excited, games that I'm pumped for. Obviously, this is a very PlayStation-centric channel, so therefore most of the games we cover are PlayStation-related, and that's not going to change. Maybe going forward, we can start expanding and talking about more than just the upcoming PlayStation exclusives. However, I will say that PlayStation exclusives in particular, the reason why I gravitate towards them is because they just a lot of them just seem to be doing things very differently and very outside of the norm, I guess you could say, when it comes to the most of the industry. I don't want to say the rest of the industry, because obviously there are different corners of the industry with like CD Projekt Red and whatnot, where developers are really doing some very, very interesting things. Uh, in terms of bigger games, that is, we're not really focusing on the smaller games. But anyway, just wanted to say thank you. Moving on, we are going to go over this information. It says that Naughty Dog's seemingly gone mental with all of this tech in The Last of Us Part 2. In an interview with Polygon, co-director Anthony Newman explains the game's heartbeat system, which sounds equal parts insane and impressive. The gist of it is that The Last of Us Part 2, in The Last of Us Part 2, every character, that's Ellie, her allies, her enemies, the infected, everyone has a heartbeat. When characters are performing strenuous actions like running, jumping, and engaging in combat, their heartbeat increases, and this leads to dynamic audio like heavier breathing and panting. Yeah, we told you it sounds crazy. I'm not sure if you noticed it, but as Ellie sprints around and then she settles, she'll kind of catch her breath, Newman says. What's happening behind the scenes is that Ellie has a heart rate that is oscillating up and down. It goes up when you sprint, it goes up when you melee, it goes up when you take damage, and it goes up in the presence of enemies. And that modulates the bucket of breathing sounds that she's able to use. But again, the system, the same system applies to enemies as well. If foes are looking to quickly sneak around the back and flank you during a skirmish, then you might hear them coming, especially if they're already knackered. It's been incredible because I found myself self able to play cat and mouse with clickers better than ever before because I can kind of understand them by the noises that they're making. Newman teases rather creepily. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this sounds, this does sound insane. Like, I've literally never heard of anything like that in a game. And maybe it's one of these things where, like, you know, they're making it sound bigger than it is. But I don't think so. Like, I feel like when you actually watch the gameplay and you listen, like, if you actually listen for the subtle sounds that he's talking about here, I did kind of notice that when watching the, uh, like, raw gameplay. Uh, and no, but and no commentary over it. I kind of noticed that there's just these little sounds that just it seems so realistic, and that's just the craziest part about this game to me that I think is really gonna leave me kind of shocked. Um, I don't know 
if I've ever seen a game actually attempt to implement systems like this in an effort to make it just that realistic. I mean, we went over the motion matching technology, which in itself is absolutely incredible. And it's clear that when we play The Last of Us Part Two, there's going to be just a whole new level of realism in terms of animations and character movement and how everything around you reacts in, in just the most realistic way we I think we will ever see in a video game up until this point. But now hearing that there's actually a heartbeat system where every character in the game has a heartbeat and you're going to be, they're basically going to react based off of, um, you know, whether or not you, that heart rate is increasing or decreasing. And, you know, this is where we talk about the tension factor, which is actually something else we're going to be mentioning here when we talk about how The Last of Us 2 is going to be very accessible for people, but the biggest thing that Naughty Dog doesn't want to sacrifice is the tension. And hearing about this heartbeat system and all the little nuances that go behind it, you know, it, it brings me back to when I'm playing this game, the first game that is, those moments with the clickers, like that tension, that, uh, you know, just that, that heart rate, like my actual heart rate is going up, and to actually see that happening in real time or, you know, hearing the sounds that you would normally hear when somebody's heart rate goes up, like they start breathing quicker, you know, they seem a little bit more uh, on edge and you can just, you know, they start moving around a little bit, just all these little things. It sounds incredible, guys. Like, it really does. I don't mean to just sit here and focus so much on such a small thing, but I actually love this. I love hearing the developers talking about this just absolutely insane technology and these systems that they're implementing in a game that I have never heard of before and this is why Naughty Dog is looked at the way they are because they are literally out here doing things that to other developers probably sounds insane but they're just like we're gonna do it forget it we're, we're gonna give every character a heartbeat we're gonna give every clicker in this game a heartbeat and that is awesome but moving on from that we are also going to talk about the accessibility options for The Last of Us Part Two. It says that the conversation around making games accessible to more players has been burning brighter this generation, and it's something more developers are paying attention to. More and more games are beginning to provide accessibility options for those who need them. Naughty Dog has actually been making a case with its last couple of titles, Uncharted 4 Thief's End and Lost Legacy both have many options to make sure everyone, regardless of ability, will have a good experience. Sounds like the studio is taking the same approach with The Last of Us Part 2. During an interview with Mexican site 3D uh, Huegos, hopefully I'm saying that right, director Neil Druckmann assures that the sequel will be approachable to all types of players. However, this won't be at the cost of the game's atmosphere. We want the game to be accessible, that many people can play it, but that everyone feels the tension no matter how difficult they play it, says a Google translated Druckmann. That tension is very important in Ellie's story and the feeling that leaves you. So it goes on to say that there will of course be multiple difficulty settings, but it seems that the studio will go the extra mile. We will have many accessibility options. We know that not everyone has the same skill, the same uh, visual or auditory ability. We want to make sure everyone can enjoy the story Druckmann says. So, yeah, I actually thought that this was an important thing to highlight because even though it's not the biggest question or the first question that people usually have, or at this point in time, the question we're asking because we're just so excited for the game, but, you know, something I do think is important is that there is going to be options for people, right? And this is, I think, a game like The Last of Us Part Two honestly does need this type of accessibility because the truth is like the biggest like the most critical factor in my opinion when it comes to the last of us part two is going to be the story that unfolds the journey that you go on and to think that there would potentially be some people who could miss out on that because they either just don't have the skill or they do have some type of disability or whatever it may be that's just a little bit, you know, upsetting. That's not to say I don't have respect for studios that choose to make a game difficult because this is just the, the, the design philosophy around it, you know, thinking about like from software, you know, game like Bloodborne and whatnot. You know, not every game needs difficulty settings, but in this case with The Last of Us Part Two, I do think that, yeah, it, it serves the game well because there's no doubt that there are people who are gonna wanna experience this game, people who maybe don't even uh, play that many games, but they know just how big of a game The Last of Us Part Two is going to be, and they want to experience that. I'm all for it. Now, for me, 
I, I do like a challenge in my games, and so when I play The Last of Us Part Two for the first time, I plan on playing it on grounded difficulty. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to be playing it on grounded difficulty my first playthrough, uh, but I'm probably just going to play it on normal difficulty and uh, you know take it from there. Once I complete it, then I'll probably maybe... Look, I, I know for a fact I'm going to want to complete this game on grounded difficulty. I haven't tried it yet on the first game. A lot of people have been telling me during my streams that I should, but I don't know. I, I don't know if that's something I'd want to stream. But uh, I'm looking forward to it because I feel like a game like The Last of Us Part Two is one that I'm going to want to spend a lot of time with. And part of that is going to be, you know, trophy hunting as well as just seeing what the other difficulty options are like. But it sounds like, honestly, grounded difficulty in this game is going to be insane. I Again, I don't know exactly what it's like for the first game, but hearing about all these systems, just seeing the gameplay I've seen, I heard it, you know, it looks a little bit difficult just even if they're playing on normal where you actually do have to pay attention, right? But again, it is nice that for those who are not trying to go through this game with an immense challenge, I have nothing against accessibility options in this case. Um, you know, would I be upset at any time if a studio decides that they want to put accessibility options? No, I don't. I'm just simply saying that, you know, if Naughty Dog came out here and said that, yeah, we just want the game to be as difficult as possible, I feel like that wouldn't serve the game too well, considering the type of game it is, if you guys understand what I'm saying. It's just, it's not that type of game where, you know, you're playing it necessarily just for the challenge. You know, a game that has this much story, that has, you know, all of this tech going into it to serve that story, it's just, I think it's a good thing. And I just thought it was worth taking a little bit of time here to uh, let everybody know that this is something that Naughty Dog has taken very seriously. They've done it in the past, like it says here, with games like Uncharted 4 and Lost Legacy. And they want to make sure that as many people as possible can experience this game in any way they like when it releases. So that's going to do it for the video, guys. Again, appreciate all of your support here recently on the channel. Does not go unnoticed. I love taking any opportunity I can to talk about The Last of Us Part 2. In fact, I think we are going to have some more information to go over as well. Um, and I'm going to be you know, keeping you guys up to date with everything I can regarding this game here on the channel. So be sure to leave your thoughts down below about this heartbeat system and about these accessibility options. What are your thoughts on it? Be sure to leave the video a like if you did enjoy it or found it informative. It really helps it out. It lets me know you guys enjoyed the content. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload. And feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.